Hello, I just parked my horse and carriage. I really need to talk to the principal about getting a designated spot for them. But we're back here for week two at Cedar Hill Prep. I, for one, could not be more excited. Today, I'll be meeting the vice principal, Mrs. Karen Yerman. I hear such lovely things about her. The kids that I've worked with, that I've talked to, have really been so excited to be in her class. And the older kids have told me about how much they loved being in Mrs. Yerman's class in the past. I can't meet, wait to meet her myself and see what's going on in her classroom that's got all the kids so excited. Come on along. What are some of the patterns of learning and communication which you've observed while teaching fourth grade at CHP that overlap with some of your school-wide observations as the vice principal? Okay, that's an interesting question. <laughs> Um, I think actually the best way to describe that would be throughout the day, whenever I have a prep period, I'll walk around the building, okay, and I learn so much, not only about myself, but about the others, and you know, it's really interesting because we're all really employing a very similar methodology. Um, direct, explicit instruction is paramount in everything that we do. But then the ways in which we handle that and what we do with it will differ. And that's when you start to see everyone's personalities. But what is the constant is the instruction, the reinforcement, the interactive nature of everything that we do, and the emphasis on developing vocabulary and really broadening the students' perspectives. So I might have a plan in place for, let's say, latitude and longitude, which we were doing today. Well, all of a sudden, it might take us to the international date line, and we might all of a sudden go on a, con you know, a whole discussion about a particular country. So it brings in all different facets, and having that flexibility is so key to having a vital learning environment. And it also helps the students not only expand their knowledge, but really to develop their vocabulary. So many of our students speak multi-languages. So for them, development of vocabulary is key. The little um, sayings that we so commonly use in English, most of the time they don't know what it means. And they'll say, this is German. What do you mean? You know, and and then we go into a whole explanation and sometimes we'll research the derivation of it. So again, we're constantly expanding knowledge and I see that in my colleagues as well. What are some of the particular aspects of the curriculum in your classroom mm -hmm. that tend to carry over from one school year to the next? The basic curriculum carries over for sure. Um, it is a research-based curriculum that Ms. Nan has worked diligently on over the years with faculty input, okay? Um, so the essence of that um, remains the same. And then as we see fit, there are adjustments made each year. It might be in a textbook. I mean, essentially the textbooks remain the same. Literature might change. A novel that we use one year, we may not use the next year. That's entirely possible but the concentration is really on the skills that we hope to develop. So whether we develop it in novel A or with novel B, it really doesn't matter. Again, we're trying to expand the children's base as much as we possibly can. So our language arts, our grammar book, is I have actually been using since I've been working here. And in all of my years of teaching, I have never seen as comprehensive a book. Our fourth graders are diagramming all parts of speech by the end of the year. It looks like an architectural drawing, okay? So when they start in September and they look at it and they go, oh, Mrs. Yerman, I'm never going to be able to do this. By May, it's like, oh, this is pretty easy, okay? Vocabulary, in addition to all the vocabulary that we do in the content areas, we have a separate vocabulary program called Wordly Wise. And there again, and it shows, what really shows that it's working is when the kids will say to me, as we're reading something, oh, Mrs. Yerman, that's a Wordly Wise word. Or, oh, we did that in spelling. They remember, okay? And that 
is further testament to how we are constantly expanding the vocabulary base. So important. And then they learn the usage and they'll use it in their writing and they'll use it in their speaking and they'll always make sure they let you know that they're doing that. <laughs> so lastly, on a more lighthearted personal note, if you could sit down for a conversation with any famed educator or academic figure, either alive or in history, who, who would that be? I would have to say probably the first one would be Marie Montessori, okay, because she truly was revolutionary in the late 1800s, early 1900s, um, to be able to say that all children are creative and all children can learn no matter what their disabilities are and to be able to, they really need to have the ability to have an environment that will support that at their specific level and whatever their needs are. It was revolutionary and I think that really was the building block of all that we take for granted today. Okay, so she would be one. Um, and I think the others, I have been fortunate in all of the years I've been teaching to have as co-workers, faculty members that are amazing. So yeah, any one of them. <laughs> I am in awe so many times when I see the different creative approaches. So yeah, yeah. past and current. <laughs> well, that was fantastic. Mrs. Yerman could not be nicer. She welcomed me right into her classroom and answered all of my questions. I see exactly why the kids like her so much. I'll tell you, I really wish that my own children back at home in the 1800s had a teacher like Mrs. Yerman. I think they're a little bit old for her right now, but I'll tell you what I don't think they're too old for. I hear tell of the sports program here at CHP. I need to find out some more information about this. That's definitely something that my kids would be interested in hearing about back at home. So next week, I think I'll sit down and I'll talk to one of the coaches. I can't wait. I hope you come join me and we'll find out together more about the sports program at Cedar Hill Prep. I believe they told me it's called the Lil Cats. Let's meet those cats together. See you then.